we act upon this matter at once, stand united against the menace of reprisal, you will individually find yourselves staring into a bottomless pit of political confusion. Cooperation and conciliation are excellent when the parties there too are sincere, but cooperation and conciliation at the cost of our national honor. How's that? Churchill couldn't have done better, Mr. Egan. Oh, uh, shall I play it again from the beginning? I'd love it, but uh, I don't think we have time. Oh, yes, that's right. I'll see you at the airport later. All right. Oh, Miss Winthrop, are all my papers in order? Everything's in your briefcase except your instructions from Washington. Uh, the courier will be here any minute. However, you don't have to wait. Good evening. Is Mr. Egan's in? Whom shall I say is calling? Uh, official business. Oh, yes. Good evening, Mr. Eakins. Good evening. We've been expecting you. Yes, sir. You are, sir? Sealed orders, eh? Yes, sir. Not to be opened until you're at the conference. The courier just arrived. Yes. Eakins is in his office now. He'll be there for at least another hour. All right, I will. Furthermore, gentlemen, unless we act upon this matter at once, stand united against the menace of reprisal, you will individually find yourselves staring into a bottomless pit of political confusion. Cooperation and conciliation are excellent when the parties there, too, are sincere. But cooperation and conciliation at the cost of our national honor. I'd like to have a friend join me on the plane from Chicago. Would it be possible to make a reservation now on the plane to the coast? You could buy the space from here, then he would certainly be assured a seat. Oh, it sounds like a good idea. Where are the phones? Oh, I see them. Thank you. Passenger Stevens, please report to TWA Airlines Council. Passenger Stevens, please report to TWA Airlines Council. Long distance, please. I'd like to place a call for a Mr. Bocajian in Chicago. He's at the Grange Hotel. Yes. That's Bocajian. B O K E J I A N. Oh, it's a great deal of money to carry about, Mr. Bocajian. This is the best way for me, sir. As the representative of my government, I shall be spared the embarrassment of search. Diplomatic immunity is the phrase, I believe. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to refresh you on the major terms of our agreement. Well, I remember them all, but if you wish. What your government does with these funds to preserve its status quo is none of our business. Our only concern is that we're granted every oil and mineral concession, as it is here, outlined in detail. In plain English, yours is just a capital investment. You have nothing whatsoever to do with my country's political internal friction. Exactly. Now, if you'll just sign all three copies. Uh, may I have your fountain pen? Certainly. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, this is Bocajian speaking. Smith, put him through. New York calling. Hello? Have you got the information? You have? It's splendid. Yes. Constellation Flight 153 from New York. I certainly be on it. Well, I intended to leave in the morning anyway. 
Bye bye. Thank you. Star coach flight 20 for Los Angeles, leaving gate 8. Amy Winthrop. Thank you. Has Mr. Eakins come on board yet? No, he hasn't, Miss Winthrop. How is the name? Marie de la Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> name, please. Eakins. Is there a uh, Miss Winthrop on board? Yes, yeah, she's right down there, third seat. Oh, thank you. Okay. I'll keep this. You? Did you, uh, think I'd miss the plane? I... Oh, no. Where's Egan's? I'm, uh taking his place. He's dead. Oh, no. It was an accident. I, I hit him too hard. Oh, just a minute, Carol. We got a confidential message just before we took off. There's a federal man aboard. We're supposed to cooperate with him if he wants anything. I wonder who he is. I don't know, but you'll probably recognize him by the atomic ring he earned for eating his cereal. you'd like to take a nap. Oh, no plane. Oh, it's perfectly safe. One never knows with whom one is traveling. People who use planes are no different than those who travel other ways. Good evening. Is this your first trip up? Yes, it is. Sit back and relax. It's better that way. Maybe I could bring you a pillow. I don't think so. If your friend is airsick, may I suggest... Uh, no, thanks. He's quite all right. What are you, a man or, or a mouse? I'm... I'm a mouse. A man would never get himself in a trap like this.
Pardon me, miss. Do you have a passenger list? Yes. Uh, may I see it? Well, it isn't exactly customary. Oh, it's quite all right. I'm in government service. If you care to see my credentials, I... Oh, it's okay. We had word you'd be on board. Oh, really? We're always happy to cooperate with the FBI. Well, I... I'm afraid you have your services a little mixed up, young lady. I'm with the Foreign Office. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry I'm not with the FBI, but uh, our end of the game has its romantic side, too, you know. I'm sure it has, sir. Thank you. I'll take that pillow, miss. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Anyone we shouldn't know? Not on the list, but the hostess let slip there's a federal man aboard. Which one is it? I don't know. I couldn't be too curious. Chicago, please fashion yourself. So please don't wander off. Buying a detective story? No, but that's an idea. Not about it. He was watching me. Your name, sir? Bookage in B O T E. Yes, I have it. Thanks. You'll find seats forward. Thank May you. May I take your coat and hat? Your bag? I keep this, thank you. Look at you, an old man. <laughs> oh, it's a surprise, Sir Harry, I believe. As if you didn't know. <laughs> well, I haven't seen you since those colonial days. Why, well, it must be 15, no, 20 years. You were a clerk in my office in those days. Now I hear you become quite a national figure. Hey, what? <laughs> I came up a little, we might say. Well, what are you doing in America? I'm going to vote for my country in the Pan-Asiatic Conference. Your country? Oh, yes, I keep forgetting. You people are quite independent now, yes. As a matter of fact, I'm attending the conference myself. Then we'll reach an amicable settlement, I'm sure. Oh, yes, we're all so very amicable these days. Well, how about moving in here with me? Uh, if you don't mind, I rather... Oh, come on, come on, sit down, sit down. Well, it is going to be very pleasant. Yeah, it's lovely, yes. Yeah. Thank you. about it. We've got an FBI man on board, all right. Wouldn't be one of you two boys, would it? Are you kidding? Well, not me. I get it. Shouldn't have asked. But I did figure I sort of eliminated everybody else. Well, good night, boys.
think I've found our mystery man. He's just the type. I was beginning to think it was him. Not the type at all, much too genteel. I think it's perfectly disgraceful having to travel with a common criminal. They ought to have a special plane for that type of people. If we only knew who this awful person was. It couldn't be that nice looking man there. Must be that shifty eyed young man there. the detective story. Not bad. I'll let you have it as soon as I'm finished. Thanks. I just as soon sleep. This old fool will never stop talking. You won't mind if I come right to the point, then. To the point? I want more money. We agreed on a price. What I have here are the authentic documents sent to Weekend. No. But the risk is now enormous. For me, not for you. That's why the price is up. How much do you want? 25,000. But in dollars, of course. In dollars. I haven't got that much money. You're carrying close to a million. You know everything, don't you? I know a great deal. Oh, excuse me. I squeeze. Have you uh, heard whether or not we're arriving on time? Thank you. I've always found diplomatic work extremely fascinating. Quite. That's why I've been in it these many years. Do you uh, happen to know Mr. Eakins of the New York office? Eakins? George Eakins? Then you know him? Well, uh, yeah. no, no, not personally, but uh, I've heard of him. Oh, excuse me. Well, you have me at a disadvantage. You see, I'm not an individual, Smith. I have my country to A consider. political opportunist like yourself, Bocajan, has only yourself to consider. That's why you'll give 25,000 to know which way the vote is going. It, uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to be with the right political party, would it? Particularly when you have the money to buy the guns. You are a dangerous man, Smith. Because I know too much because you talk too much. Let's not change the subject. Are you buying or not? 15,000. I'm afraid I'll have to sell elsewhere. If you have no other market. It's been very nice meeting you, sir. The pleasure has been mine, Miss Winthrop. Good night. Good night, my dear. I talked with Sir Harry. He never met Egan. Here you are, honey. I told you not to worry. How about a friendly little game of cards? No, thank you. Like to play a little game of cards? Oh, thanks. I'd like a game. Oh, great idea. How about the uh, lounge in there? Fine.
man up there says he'd like to see you. Where? In that little hallway. Well, who is it? I don't know, but he said it's very important. I guess I better see what it is. Thank you, dear. Is he a famous producer? No, dear. I'll get the stewardess. Take it easy. Don't go away. You, you better come. There's a man up there. I think he's sick. He's dead. Just dropped dead. Take over. Right. Is anybody with him? I don't know. I think the young lady he's sitting with is. Well, you'd better go get her. On. You'd better come forward. Do you know him? I... Yes. Sorry, fella, but you'll have to leave. Dad? Yes. Did he have heart trouble? I don't know. I didn't know him very well. Weren't you traveling with him? Well, not exactly. We met and... Well, I used to know him. You're lying. What do you mean? He's Eakins, isn't he? Yes. But I don't see why... Well, why are you questioning me like this? All I'm trying to do is establish this man's identity so the proper people can be notified. You're his secretary, aren't you? Yes. Then maybe you could answer my first question. Did he have heart trouble? I don't know. He never said. What's customary in cases like this? Oh, well, in cases of sickness or sudden death, we usually sit down at the nearest airport. They check on the cause of death? That's right. We radio ahead. There'll be a doc and some officials there when we come in. This happened to me once before. What about the passengers? How do you mean that? I mean, are they held too until cause of death is determined? If it's murder, I guess they'd have to stick around with settle. For the time being, let's forget about that angle. You're the boss. Then you better start doing what's customary. Right. You might as well go back to your seat. No use spreading this around. What the people out there don't know won't hurt them. Have the other hostess stick around outside and stare everybody else into the other washroom. All right. I'd like to talk to the pilot again. Any idea yet where you're setting down? Weather reports, fog, all the way to the coast. Meaning what? Meaning that we'll have to carry the deceased the rest of the way in. Oh, that's bad. You're telling me. I've got other reasons. By the time I get a report on the manner of death, all my pigeons will have flown. Then you do think it's murder. Well, if it isn't, it's a pretty funny coincidence. Is that dead man back there got anything to do with what you're working on? Yeah, sort of. My assignment was to tag the secretary. Look, Captain, you've got to get me and that body down somewhere between here and L.A. Closer to here, the better. I've got to think of my passengers first. I'm thinking of them. 
About 150 million of them. Any openings yet? How about Jackson Field? What's Jackson Field? Jackson Field's an Army air base. They have GCA there. They could bring us in if the emergency warranted. Well, this is an emergency. Let's try it. I don't know. Too dangerous? Not especially. Blind man could do it. All you have to have is ears. It's just that the stunt isn't in the company's flying book. As long as you feel you can do it safely, I'll take the heat on any kickbacks. Okay. See if you can get us authority to set down at Jackson Field. Yes, sir. I say, miss, is there anything wrong up there? One of the passengers is taken suddenly ill. Seriously? Well, we may have to sit down and take him off. I hope this doesn't delay us. I hope not. Did you hear that? No, what? got a Colonel Hanson at Jackson Field. He wants to know what it's all about. Can I talk to him? Sure. Hello, Colonel Hanson. What's this about landing here? Who are you? Stephen Blair, federal agent. We're on a transcontinental flight, and we've got a dead body on board. It's essential that I have an autopsy before we get to Los Angeles. All the civilian fields are fog-bound, and I understand you can bring us in. Is that right? Are you sure the circumstances warrant it? Colonel, this involves a question of national security. Good. Could you have a doctor waiting? He'll be here. Now, let me talk to the pilot. Hello, Colonel Hanson. This is Captain Fairchild. Stand by, and I'll turn you over to radio control. They'll set you on course, bring you into the 10-mile radius at correct altitude and azimuth. Carol, what's going on up there? All right, I'll tell them. We're making an emergency landing at Jackson Field, an Army base. There's absolutely no danger. Nothing is wrong with the plane. One of the passengers is taken suddenly ill and must be taken off. We'll only be at the air base a few moments, so no one is permitted to leave the plane. Please fasten your belt. Roger Baker, George II. Uh, this is the final controller. Uh, remain on receive for the remainder of this transmission. Uh, maintain your present elevation and continue vector 315. Your range now just under seven miles. Azimuth is fair. Uh, maintain your present elevation. Fly left three degrees. Now six miles. Azimuth still very good. Your present heading is holding you on course nicely. Azimuth still good. Hold your elevation. Maintain your present heading. Fly right two degrees. Azimuth are not correcting. I say again, fly right at two degrees. You are on course, approaching the glide path slowly. You are approaching course nicely. Now left two degrees. Azimuth improving.
Nice job. Thanks a lot. Hey, what's the idea of holding us here like this? Don't complain to me. You heard the instructions. Well, I think we should at least be allowed to take another plane. From this airfield, there is no other plane. Who's the guy who went off the plane with the pilot? I don't know. They don't tell me anything. Shall we be delayed very long? I don't think so, sir. Mm, yes, thank you. Frankly, this has me puzzled. All I want to know is, was he killed? That's what I mean. If I could have a thorough autopsy, I could probably answer your question without hesitation. How long would it take? An hour or so. We'd have to go over to the lab and run the tests. Tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to continue the flight as though there's nothing out of the ordinary, which maybe there isn't. If you find out this guy's been bumped, then radio me the news to the plane. We have some boys from the Bureau meeting us in Los Angeles. If there's anything wrong, we'll be better able to cope with it out there. Will that be all right? I think so. But if you don't mind my asking, what makes you suspect this is murder? Looks to me like he just keeled over. No reason why you men shouldn't know. My job on this flight was to follow the woman who's with him, Amy Winthrop. She's been an espionage suspect for some weeks. Working right in the State Department, eh? As George Eakin's secretary. I'm new on this case. I've never seen this man before, but from the description given me, I doubt very much if he is Eakin's. I wonder if you'd do me one more favor. Why, I'd be delighted. I'd like you to wire New York and find out about Eakin's. Find out whether or not he ever left the city. You got that answer? Relay that to the plane. Right. Let's shove off. Okay. Kind of goop from the East Indian jungles. Natives down there use it to poison blowgun darts. Hmm. All the time I've been worried about the atom bomb. The man will be glad to see this. Tell him he was right. The dead man back there was an Eakins. The real Eakins was found in his office. Also dead. I don't know what it means, but I'll tell him. much longer before we get in. A little over an hour, I'd say. We're just going over Boulder Dam. I know. It's just a precaution. The boys up front ask about it. Tell them that. Do you want me to take it up now? Yes. And don't try to be cagey about it. I want as many people as possible to see you send it.
scheduled to land at Municipal Airport in half an hour, but due to fog conditions, we're landing at Burbank. If anyone is meeting you there, they'll be notified to meet you at Burbank. Now, I'd like to make a little announcement before we arrive. I received word a little while ago that the man who was removed at Jackson Field was murdered. Obviously, he was murdered by somebody who at this moment is on this plane. As a federal agent, I've taken it upon myself to wire this information ahead. So we'll be met at the airport by the police. All of you people will be held for questioning. That's right, Constellation. Flight 153. Due to land at Municipal Airport within the hour. Now, there are only two airports in this vicinity where a Constellation can land. They are Municipal Airport and Burbank. Cover them both. The situation is ridiculous to think this upstart has the effrontery to hold us. I think we ought to assert ourselves. Let's have it out. Sir Harry? Now then, my man. When you said everybody on the plane, you accepted diplomatic envoys such as Mr. Vocation and myself, of course. Sorry, no exceptions. We are engaged in an important business of state. Well, it's never been proved that statesmen are about committing murder. You are insolent, sir. What is your name? Stephen Blair. B-L-A-I-R. And be sure you spell it right because I'm due for a promotion. May I talk to you? Sure, go right ahead. You've been following me, haven't you? We've known about you for months. We know all about your New England background, your college education and normal school. The only thing we don't know is why you did it. For money? For a misplaced ideal? For what? That's my own personal life. Uh, when treason and murder are involved. Or would you rather pin that on your dead friend? He was my husband. Who killed Eakins, you or he? What does it matter now? Then who killed your husband? That doesn't matter either. My husband had $15,000 on him when he was killed. He had about 55 bucks when I searched him. You mean you don't have the 15,000? I never saw it. I thought perhaps you... Well, I intended to give you this, too, if you'd... Make it easier on you? Yes. There's one way you can take the heat off yourself. Who killed your husband? I'm not sure. But you have a good idea. He was negotiating with Bocasia. Now it's beginning to fit. I want a word with you, fella. I'll speak to you later. I don't know what cooks with you and the dame, but we'll skip that. All I want is to walk off of here without an armed escort. You're just a pretty boy that can fix it up for me. You're too fast for me, friend. I don't get it. Hand over your gun. Now phone your friends up front. Tell them we're landing at Municipal. We can't land there on account of the fog. Fog or no fog, pal, we're landing at Municipal. Blair speaking. Now listen. I want you to put in at Municipal instead of Burbank. Now go forward to the washroom and don't try any fast ones. Is there anything I can do for you? Forget it.
sorry, sir, but all passengers... I'm sorry, too, sister. I'm getting off. Where is Mr. Blair? I don't know. Mr. Blair! Mr. Blair, what happened? All the passengers are leaving. Booker Journey's apprehending? I'd like to borrow your pen, if I may. My fountain pen? Yeah. Certainly. going back east. Day after tomorrow, why? That's wonderful. That'll give us a couple of days to really get acquainted. Is he arresting her too? Our State Department was suspicious that information was leaking out. So they arranged to give Eakins blank orders. Smith killed Eakins to get the orders and then he and Amy sold them to Bacajan. Bacajan found out they were blanks. He got mad and bumped Smith off with his fountain pen full of poisoned ink. Then Amy was a spy. Yeah. But this is no place to talk. Come on. This time I'm going to buy you a cup of coffee. You know, we ought to put in our application and become airline hostesses. Well, let's do it right now. Mm -hmm. 